Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Currently Platinum 4. I'm just going through the ranks here with uh, Mono White Tokens. No changes here to the deck since yesterday. Really been enjoying it. And uh, yeah, if you guys are new here to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and viewing my channel and supporting me. And if uh, you'd like to become a member, I do have a couple members, so I want to give a shout out to them. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. It really does mean the world to me. Uh, if you want to become a member and have early access to my content for as little as $1.99 a month, here's exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. All right, so yeah, again, no changes here to the deck. It's been working pretty well. Let's go ahead and jump into some games. Yeah, I've been having so much fun with this list. Um, I feel like it's in a pretty good spot right now where it's definitely kind of a, a lower to the ground, more aggressive variant of the tokens deck. There is definitely also a Boros um, like control tokens list, which is a bit slower, um, but has, you know, just kind of more like board wipes, things like that, makes better use of some cards that are a bit more value oriented. But uh, this deck has been a lot of fun. Um, so opening hand is pretty weak. We don't have anything to kind of get started here with our hand. We do have enough mana here. Maybe I should just keep this and just like hope to draw into some one drops or two drops. So yeah, I think I'll try keeping it here. I don't, I don't like mulliganing if I can avoid it, but this might be a hand that you're supposed to mulligan. Yeah, not a great draw here. We're gonna need some action pretty soon. Okay, there's a, at least a creature, but we definitely, we probably should have mulliganed this hand in all honesty. It's just pretty slow with the double knight errant. Yeah, and red definitely has the ultra beat down here, so I think we're just gonna unfortunately end up scooping up here pretty soon. Well, lesson learned, hopefully. Yeah, I kind of know coming back from this now. Um, is if they have like absolutely nothing, we can maybe get this going. But yeah, we're dead to just like so much here. Okay, I guess if they've got like the actual nothing, maybe we're still in this, which is pretty wild to think about. Question is if we should uh, maybe tap some mana just to make sure we have blockers here. That could be right. Although I guess we kind of have to sort of high roll to stay in this game anyways. So maybe we just try to push. I guess we just kind of go for it. That was a nice pickup. Man, I guess if they just like completely stall out, we could potentially come back.
I mean, I'll take it. I think I want Evangelist set up here also. So I wonder if we should keep Bat up just in case they like draw into Slick Shot. I guess we're at six and they don't have anything else to go with it, so maybe it's safe to tap down. I mean, Warren Guard is a decent attacker here. I think I just want, like, value plus a couple more guys. I think I'm just going to go for these two. All right, now we can push. How many do attack with, though? See, we want to make sure we have at least four blockers. One, two. Yeah, I guess we can push it a little bit more here. Something like that. Just try to set up for game next turn. I don't think we care about this challenger since we know they can't give it trample so we can just chump that and then just survive here They can get us to one here, I think, right? Yeah, not quite enough. Whoo, squeaked it out. That'll work. Okay, that was a very suspect hand to keep. Um, we definitely easily could have been punished there. But on the whole, I like to not mulligan if I can avoid it. And like that deck, or that hand definitely had like the, the possibility of like going big like it did there, but just a little bit slow. Okay, this hand looks a lot better. I think here you play the Warren Guard over Warden, just because like if we possibly like draw into um, the Investigator, then we can like still attack for three with this by playing like Warden plus Investigator this turn. We didn't draw it, so it didn't really matter, but it was possible. This is a nice setup for turn three though with the Evangelist. Being able to attack with both of these for three feels pretty good. Don't need any more land. I thought about like the the dedicated rabbit deck and it looked interesting. 
Um, I don't know how good it is. I feel like this deck is more fun, at least kind of for my playstyle. But uh, curious to see how well this deck does. So here we got a couple options. We could go like Warden into Knight Errant. Um, we can also go like Evangelist. I think we just want to case and get rid of this Quest Caller though, and just sort of slow them down a little bit. So like Warden plus case feels pretty good. That's fine. Certainly happy to trade for double token there. It's a nice pickup. Um, I think we just want to evangelist into Night Errant here, though. I guess, like, how nasty is Phineas? Buffs up the rest of his team decently well. That could get out of hand pretty quickly. I mean, we could also set up like another case as well. So like if we use case here, get rid of Phineas, this is a 2-2. Two -two. Like this is definitely like the bigger kind of setup play, but I feel like case here is actually pretty good also. Because like if they want to trade for one of our guys here, we're actually still feeling pretty good. It's less of like a go big turn. But like slowing that down still felt pretty good. That was a really nice pickup. You could also just like swing for 10 here. Um, I think I'd rather just go for the Knight Errant. So yeah, that, that play last turn, like Knight Errant is definitely like a bigger play. I don't know if that was right. I just, like, their Phineas is such a nasty card if it gets going at all. Okay. Nice pickup. I think we want to get Evangelist going. And then just like send, full send here. If they want to trade off, that's fine. Or eat one of our tokens, no big deal. I guess we don't have to play like Evangelist right now. We can like hold up potential tricks. Just pushing so much damage here that that felt really good so yeah basically the interesting turn i think was the turn that we decided to kill their phineas like we could have like gone super big with knight errant or kill their phineas and i feel like it, it worked out i don't know if that was ultimately the better play or not but i think that was an interesting turn Because I feel like out of all the cards in that deck, like Phineas can spiral really fast. This opening hand looks great. So if they hadn't played like a red and black land here, I might lead out with Warden if this was like blue, green, or white. Um, just because there's a decent chance we could get like Warden plus Inspector plus another one drop next turn. 
but since they have the that land I'm just gonna lead out here with inspector since this card is a little bit I'd rather not just um, you know let them like finesse a real quick like cut down or something on our ward in this turn yeah they had to cut down that's fine I've played against this Rakdos deck actually before once. The, the Lizard deck is pretty nasty. They can kind of go pretty hard. So I think I've only played it once, picked up a loss. Um, it seemed like a pretty powerful deck. Here we just want to set up with Warden instead of cracking the clue, just to try to get closer to Knight Errant. Even though we've got Virtue, I don't think we want to draw land there. Just try to go a little bit bigger. I mean, Virtue will be important eventually, I think, but... I, I guess it's arguable. You could have kept the land, I suppose. Yeah, these Thought Stalkers are nasty. It's actually a decent pickup. Question is, do we want to trade off our knight for their thought stalker? <sighs> Maybe. Yeah, I guess I'm okay with it. We can still, like, get Warden going. I kind of like... Yeah, ultimately, I think that they probably just block here. So do we even bother attacking? I think trading off one is fine. Like, we're at 15. We're a little bit on the back foot. So if they want to make the trade, it's probably fine. And then, like, after that, I feel better about using Warden this turn. I guess we could sit back and, like, block their Thought Stalker Warlock, but we're at 15. They've only got three points. I think we just get the value. Since they made that block. Okay, that's a nice pickup. Yeah, this card is really good. I really like this deck, actually. I'm curious curious how it plays out against other arch other archetypes. Just seems like they've got like a lot of really good value. But now we're definitely playing loyalty. We can pump and then untap. We're still kind of on the back foot here. It's a nice pickup.
Okay, so they can make that a 2-3. I think we just get their deep cavern because we want to get reinforcements here. So I think we just block this, take a little bit of damage. Hopefully they don't have like too much burn. I guess they have like life loss with like hired claw and some other other cards. Like we were certainly on the back foot here, but we might be able to like, we have a nice, a really nice turn next turn though. Oh man, another thought stalker, it's so nasty. Let's see. Let's actually let's do this post combat. Um, does it matter? I don't think it actually. I think we just do it for three. I guess doesn't matter really pre combat, post combat here. Actually, let's go for four. We'll have an extra little bit extra mana, so we can push two in the or five in the air. Then go for Knight Errant. Okay, it was a nice pickup. Now I think we want to work on getting a second Warden into the air. Yeah, I think we could probably do better than Warden here. Maybe like a little bit of removal on top would be nice. Woo, packing it in. Okay, we'll take it. I did not think we were gonna, that we were gonna come back and win that game. So yeah, the power of uh, Virtue of Loyalty really shining there. And I think the full playset feels really good in this deck right now. Um, yeah, nice little quick 3-0. Really happy with how the deck's performing. Um, let's take a quick look at the stats. All right, we are currently at 68% win rate, 80% win rate on the play, and 62% on the draw. 21 wins and 10 losses. So, yeah, in terms of the matchups, they're starting to get a couple matchups going here um looks like we fleshed out a bit more on like the mono red and the um uh green black um decks here so we're five and two against mono red 71 percent four and two against green black and then a couple two o's and some sort of mixed results here so we'll try to get some more reps in but anyways thanks guys so much again for watching um, I hope you're enjoying the, the journey here, climbing up ladder, and um, I'm having a ton of fun. So thank you guys again. I really do appreciate you.